Hello, Tom with Plumbing and Air by Tom. We're out here this morning looking at a pent air pool heater that the customer said is not firing. Uh, stay tuned and we'll go through the diagnosis procedures and let you know. All right, today we're looking at a pent air master temp 250 high performance heater. It is a pool heater that the customer has had service before, not by us, but um, he is saying now that the system turns on, runs for a little bit, and then it dies. So we're gonna check it out. So right now the pool heater is off because it's off from the control of the main control panel. So this is the pool main control panel. And if we go to the menu, we will see that the heater is turned off by the system. There it is, heater. Hit select. Spot pool. And there you see the heater is off. So we take our arrow and we go down to, I know actually. So the heater is off, right there it says it. So we hit the select button. And you see that the temperature starts to flash off. And then we turn it to heater and then we hit the menu button. Now the heater has been energized and it's going through its stages of initializing. Turn it on. And it, the light is flickering that it's heating, but there's no hot air yet. It takes a while. The igniter has to ignite, has to glow, has to get hot enough, and then a flame will ignite the gas and then the gas will flow through it and start heating. When we're not getting anything, usually you'll hear a click from the gas valve, which is in the back. Still no heat, still no ignition. You'll definitely hear it when it kicks on. get the service heater light. So what we'll do is we'll turn the heater off and we're going to remove this panel here and look at the control panel. So the heater will run and eventually will turn off. And there it is, it turned off. It doesn't turn off by the switch because the panel is what controls it. So we have to remove this side panel here. I've already taken the screws out. There's four screws. We just lift on the bottom here and it comes right off. Hold on. Okay. And we're exposed. There's a panel back here, but the panel we're looking for is underneath here. So normally you would remove this panel. There's a couple of uh, butterflies that hold it on four ends and then you lift it up and you can uh, actually lift it. But I'm familiar with this panel. So all we gotta do is we're gonna aim the camera up there. And we're gonna look for a service light. All right, this is the panel that's right behind the push buttons here. And as you can see, that light is illuminated. And I don't know if you can read it, but it says in white letters, A-G-S. That is the automatic gas shutoff. So we're gonna take a look at that first. You know. All right, we're gonna shut off the gas just to make sure, even though the gas is not exposed in this case. And then we're gonna remove this uh, cover here. It's got three screws that hold it on. up and just slide it back because it's not going to come off yet. I mean we can take this plate off and it'll come off but so we have three sensors on the side this is where the intake is in the out uh, outbound lines uh, on the left side here we have the AFS which is the auto flow sensor this is the um, thermistor and over here I can see there's some weird stuff going on with that 
that is your gas shutoff sensor, your automatic gas, sh gas shutoff sensor. What these sensors are is they short out to ground whenever uh, they sense a fault and they will uh, turn off the system. So in this case, if we take a look, there's a lot of corrosion there. In fact, if you look carefully, this terminal here is actually broken. Huh, all right. So we're definitely gonna have to change the uh, auto gas shutoff. Now, to see if that is the problem, what we can do is we can jump this and we'll jump it, we'll try the uh, heater again, and if it powers up and heat starts heating, then we know that that is the problem. So let's do that. We're gonna get a jumper. We will, uh, we have a jumper here, just two alligator clips, and we're gonna remove the piece. We're gonna need some, it's almost out. It's really corroded. I mean, it's breaking as I'm, as I'm, look at, it's breaking into pieces. So we're gonna pull it out, there we go. And this is the broken terminal on it. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna shove, all you need to do is just shove the alligator clip onto one end and then do the other end as well. You don't have to take it apart or anything, it should slip right on there. All right. Let me just confirm it. The heater light is still on. So we're gonna have to reset the system to get it to kick back on. Okay, I'm here. All right, so we're gonna go back to the panel and we're going to go to the menu and we're gonna go down to heater, select, pool, select, temperature, and then heat. Heater is on heater. We're gonna turn it off. to choose it again, and we are going to turn it on. So the heater is now on, we'll hit menu, or we'll go back to going through its type. It's going through its diagnostic. The heating light is on, the service light went off. Let's feel the vent, Let's see if there's any hot air coming out. You'll hear it click in. There it goes, the valve just clicked on and boom, we have heat. So that is our problem. So we need to replace the automatic gas shutoff valve over there. So let's turn this off now. Okay, so this sensor here screws in and it is a 11 16th nut, or 11 16th, uh, you need 11 so the sensor is right here, and as you can see, you're going to need a socket or a wrench to take it out. You're probably going to need a deep socket, and it's an 11 16 socket. So we're going to have to turn that, and then when we get the new one, which is right here, this is the new part. It comes with Teflon already on it, so we're going to put the new one in. So here we go. All right, and slowly remove it, making sure that you don't force it because you could break it right off, it's brass. All right, once you loosen it up, you can take it out by hand and you'll see there's water that's gonna be coming out. All right, we should also mention that you should turn the pump off. You got the new one? It's snug. All it's right, gonna... it's snug, keep going, all right. Should be good. All right. Next, we connect the wires back on. Next, we connect the wires back on. All right. Next, we connect the connectors back in. Now, if the connectors are really bad, you should replace them. But in this case, we should be okay. 
and there's one and this one may be a little bit harder to get in because of the fact that it was the bad spade on there all right now we have the new ones on all right so before we remove the sensor you want to turn the gas off and you want to turn the pump off so make sure that there's no water flowing through it you will get some water coming out when you remove the gas sensor but it shouldn't be that much all right we go back and we will turn our gas back on and we will go to our pump and we'll turn our pump back on And there goes the pump. And we'll check our heat, see if it's on. Heater is on. Did the control panel come on? All right, we have to reset the system now. So we'll go to heater and we will turn it off. Hit menu, select again. And when that light starts flashing, Hit heater, hit menu, and that should trigger the heater back on. Yes. And there goes the heater. Those two are not error codes. Those are actually just uh, software versions and things like that. And so now, all right, on some heaters, you'll have to turn it on. And there it goes. So in a few seconds, we should get coming out of the vent there. You'll hear the valve click. If you listen carefully. There goes the valve. And there goes the igniter. And there's heat coming out. Yes, there is. Alright. So we have heat coming out of the heat. So there you go. It's all lit up. Put it back together. And we'll let it run for a little while, make sure that it doesn't shut off to give us another air code. Now, I will say this. I believe he had the uh, flow sensor replaced, but he didn't have the gas sensor replaced, obviously. And normally you want to replace them both, but since that's been recently replaced, uh, we're good with this one. And again, we didn't do the original work on this. Uh, we had a uh, whole company to do this. So before we started all this, we checked to make sure that we had power going to the valve and that the... Uh... So before we checked the ABS sensor, we checked that the valve was in the on position and that there was initial power coming to the valve so that when it received the signal from the igniter to turn on, it would kick on. So we had low voltage 24 volts coming from it so now we just need to check the ags sensor and we're good to go so all we need to do now is to put it back together now remember if you're not comfortable with reading the panel upside down there are four butterflies up here that you can remove on both sides and the cover will come off Now before we started all this, we also checked for power, we made sure that everything was kicking on. So we did other tests that we didn't put on camera, but we did the most important ones on the video. All right, here's the bad one. As you can see, it's badly corroded at the end and this one just broke off. All right, folks, uh, another job been completed successfully by plumbing and air by Tom. We'll keep recording the newer jobs coming out. Everyone have a great day and God bless.